Good morning, everyone. I'm Sally McDonald alongside Jose Grignan and Ruben Dominguez. All of us have worked with Cleverly for more than a decade, and we have such fond memories of the diva of dining and the Houston Restaurant Week's founder. So we're going to be sharing them with you all hour long. But we do want to start off with a look back at the memories. Here's Melissa Wilson. Hey everybody, it's Cleverly. This woman comes on and she brings on chefs yeah. and she's amazing. Oh, do you watch this? And segments? I've learned so much from her. Very good. Cleverly Stone, <laughs> loving, funny, giving, enthusiastic. Just a few of many ways to describe our longtime colleague and friend at Fox 26. I think we need to add a little more beer, Cleverly. Okay, all right. I think I hire her as a bartender. Cleverly introduced you to every award winning chef in town during her 12 years at Fox 26. The inviting aromas from her Cooking with Cleverly segments would draw everyone at the station into our studio. She gave you a variety, taking you live into some of Houston's finest dining establishments and then enticing your taste buds with Houston food trucks. Put the ravioli in the water. There you go. You can put the ravioli in the water. It was always food and fun with Cleverly. She loved to sing and would find a way to add melody on the set or perhaps her growl. Looks mm. delicious. We also never knew what to expect next because many days involved hilarious costumes. Her creative ways could easily draw you into her cooking set. All right, show us how to make this. Everyone, this, this is, is a great idea. I've never really heard good. of this before. This Cleverly has been all over Houston's food scene since she began writing a newsletter in the 90s. You could even get advice from Cleverly during her 17 years at 6.50 AM radio, producing and hosting her own food talk show. Hey everybody, Houston Restaurant Weeks, benefiting the Houston Food Bank is in full swing. It's impossible to measure just how much Cleverly helped the Houston community. But how's this for a start? More than $15 million. That's how much she raised for the Houston Food Bank through Houston Restaurant Weeks. It was her idea to have local restaurants invite patrons in, allow them to dine there for a fraction of the typical cost, to donate a portion of the proceeds to the Houston Food Bank. That is a project that cleverly single-handedly organized five months out of every year. She is one of the only founders of any restaurant week in the country to pull yeah. this off free of charge. The hours and hours she devoted to organizing restaurant week, she never took a dime of compensation. She did it all for free. That was her giving spirit. Even though it was a full-time job, she did it from her heart and wanted 100% of the proceeds to go to the Houston Food Bank. Now, what made you want to do this? Well, you know, my beat, I cover the food beat in Houston. So I wanted to do something to give back. So what makes better sense than to do an event that benefits the Houston Food Bank? And thank you so much to Fox 26 for all of your support. On her birthday this year, in the typical Cleverly fashion, she asked for only one thing. She urged every woman to know the signs and symptoms of uterine cancer. That's because during the busiest time of year, Restaurant Weeks of 2019, Cleverly was diagnosed with stage four uterine cancer. She wanted to make her life count through you and remind you that early detection equals a better prognosis. Cleverly was not only a hardworking colleague, but also a loving mom and grandmother. She leaves behind a daughter, grandson, many friends, and her loving Fox family. Thanks for making our lives brighter, Cleverly. We will miss you. Yes, we will miss you. You know, Cleverly's final wish was that Houston Restaurant Weeks continue on, and she knew this year would be more of a critical situation for restaurants struggling with COVID-19. Right now, we want to bring in Houston Food Bank President and CEO, Brian Green. Good morning, Brian. The, this community has really lost an icon when it comes to the food industry. How important was she to the food bank? Well, Houston Restaurant Weeks had grown to the largest fundraiser for Houston food banks. Our Houston Food Bank, and it, the the total number of meals over the years that cleverly uh, did this actually works out to 50 million meals 
uh, going to families uh, struggling with food insecurity and hunger. So, I mean, the impact was absolutely tremendous, um, as well as I mean, the reality for the food bank is the fewer people that need us, the better. Um, and the restaurant industry is a huge engine for the Houston economy and employs many, many people. And with August being historically the, the worst time where they would have to reduce the most hours, uh, fewest tips, et cetera, um, the, the impact that Houston Restaurant Weeks had on the restaurant industry was huge. And from our standpoint, that's good because that then reduced our number of customers, which ultimately is our goal. Explain to us the need. We're going through the COVID crisis. She was concerned about that, but she was looking ahead because she wanted it to continue. How difficult is it going to be, you think, for Houston Restaurant Weeks to keep going at the pace that she had it going at? Well, if this wasn't Houston, I would say it would be nearly impossible. I mean, when you look at the obstacles that the restaurants face right now, it, it's very scary. Um, where in order to meet the, the safety requirements, um, it's going to be difficult for them to also be able to stay uh, profitable, at least cover costs and be able to continue to employ people. Um, so we are looking forward to Houston Restaurant Weeks being able to have an impact on that. And that really will be our primary focus. It will still be a fundraiser. Um, but really, uh, we need to make sure that Houston thrives and the restaurants are a major uh, part of that. And so we want Houston Restaurant Weeks to be successful in helping those uh, restaurants be able to pay their waiters, pay their cooks, um, pay their suppliers, uh, pay their rent and be able to continue to help this economy because um, they've been great to us for many years. Um, how do we make it work, work for them? What would you consider to be Cleverly's legacy from your point of view? Um, well, <laughs> the impact that this has had on the Houston restaurant scene. First off, you know, Cleverly was, as she would point out, she was never a food critic. Uh, she celebrated food. She celebrated the, the work that people did, and she wanted to be supportive of that. And that's what Houston Restaurant Weeks did. Um, I think that there's a, a lot of restaurants that uh, are in a better position now than had we never done that. Uh, and then the impact on the food bank has been huge, uh, where, you know, it had grown to an annual event that raised about $2 million. Um, and then with the translation that we're able to do with the meals, especially since we emphasize fresh produce so much, um, where we translate that into the equivalent of about 6 million meals a year, um, just the number of families that frankly would never know uh, that was because of her work. Um, but they certainly uh, ended up much better off because of it. Uh, it's just absolutely huge. Brian Green, CEO of the Houston Food Bank, thank you so very much for joining us and sharing your oh. thoughts and your feelings about Cleverly Stone because she, uh, she was an amazing woman and she did a lot for a lot of folks in this community. Thank well, you, Brian. Thank you, Fox 26, for the incredible support that you've given the Houston Restaurant Wings Cleverly and this community. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Well, our time now is 8 past 9 a.m., and we are continuing to make sure that you know that Cleverly was a very close friend of ours here at Fox 26. We are truly a foodie city, and she was a huge contributor to that in terms of a reputation as, as a city. But more than anything else on TV, I think she made it approachable for a lot of people because one of the things that she did do was they may have been high in restaurants, but then again, they would mill the road and, and maybe what most of us affectionately call dives. But if it was good food, Clubly was gonna be there. She's one of those souls who will absolutely go to heaven and she'll be missed. Cleverly Stone grew Houston Restaurant Weeks to include more than 250 restaurants. She was always making it bigger and better each year. And for the past three years, B&B &B Butchers has been the single largest donor to the food bank. That's where Fox 26's Chelsea Edwards is live this morning. Hi, Chelsea. Good morning. Now, I've heard that Cleverly was such a genuine, caring woman. I didn't have the pleasure of working with her, but here is someone who did. Ben Berg of b, &B Butcher is the owner here. Tell me, what was her favorite thing about dining here? Um, I mean, 
I, I know she loved our brunch. She loved, you know, obviously this Gorilla Bread. Um, you know, cleverly loved everything about food. Um, but, you know, one of the things, you know, from her being from the Northeast in Jersey is we had uh, something called Taylor Ham. And grilled Taylor ham with, 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 you know, egg and cheese on a roll. Uh, when I told her I was putting that on the menu in the butcher shop, you know, she's like, that just brings me back home. <laughs> and you made your TV debut with her on Fox 26. How was that? I mean, it, it was great. It was fun. It was 5 o'clock in the morning for a Memorial Day special. Um, it was a little crazy with the neighborhood at the time. But, um, you know, she was just, she supported me since the day I got here. And um, she was always great. And part of that was an exchange. Like, you, yes. you were a top contributor for Houston Restaurant Weeks. How did she first convince you to get involved? I don't think I ever had a choice. <laughs> no, I mean, it was such a great, she started it, me being from New York, where I think restaurant, like the concept had started a long time ago. So I was always used to it. But, you know, she was so passionate about it. And it really drove her, you know, and, and she would talk about, you know, $1 contributes three meals. And then when, you know, you give a $98,000 donation, I mean, she would, you know, her emotional, her emotions would come out and tear up about how much that gave. And then, you know, with donations of 1.9 or $2 million, how many meals that was. She truly cared. It really drove her. Where do you think that passion came from? Why was it so important? I mean, it was her baby that she started. And I think, you know, working and living in the food industry, she wanted to, um, you know, give back. You know, she, you can see people going hungry. Okay. In our last few seconds here, okay. how would you say people can continue to honor her memory? I mean, just best wishes, you know, come out for Houston Restaurant Weeks. Um, you know, she won't be forgotten, especially in our industry. Thank you so much for sharing your memories of Cleverly. Reporting live at B&B Butchers, Chelsea Edwards, Fox 26 News. And more memories of our friend and Fox family member Cleverly Stone next. But first, the executive chef and partner of The Annie remembers her. She was a force of nature, I think, you know, um, that just made things happen and somehow uh, she was kind of like the eye of the hurricane and we all swirled around her, you know, always coming together. And I think that's how she made things happen. We were just a disorganized group and she sort of brought a sense of unity. Hi, it's Dave Morales with BackstageOL.com. Cleverly Stone, our community will forever be grateful what you have given to us and what you have done to feed the needy here in the Houston area and throughout the region. I was lucky enough to see you in action. I'm even luckier to call you friend. One particular Halloween though, you really made me laugh when I saw your costume. You decided to dress up like me. Everybody started laughing. I was in tears from laughing so hard. That's pretty much the way I would describe our friendship. Silly and always looking for fun. Cleverly, I love you, I'll miss you, and thank you. Yeah, I'm so glad that Dave mentioned her sense of humor because uh, she had a wonderful, wonderful sense of humor. And when I when I had the chance to hang out with her, uh, which was often, um, you know, uh, we would laugh. And like Dave said, you know, the tears would roll out of your eyes. Uh, she could she just had that way with people. And some of my favorite memories of Cleverly, there's so many, but um, Every year, she, she got me to come uh, judge the Golden Buckle Foodie Awards at the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. That's where you taste every single thing that's made on the rodeo grounds. They put it together in different categories. They invite all the media, uh, radio stations, bloggers, uh, TV, you know, everybody's there. And uh, Fox would have a big table, and she was always part of our group. And um, it was fun for us. It was a lighthearted event when you're, you know, when you're judging deep fried red velvet cake or 
fried butter or something like that. So we're all having a great time. But I remember I'd either sit next to Cleverly or I'd, or I'd be somewhere on the table and I'd be watching her. She would be so intense, just really judging it because that's how we, she approached everything. 100%, she was a professional and she didn't take anything that had to do with uh, being a journalist, being on television, being on the radio, being on social media. She did not take any of that lightly. She was a pro's pro every single time. All right, so I wanted to reach out to some of the people that knew her best, some of the people that co-hosted her show, some of the people that supported Houston, uh, 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 Houston Restaurant Weeks. And one of the names at the top of the list was Mr. Arthur Moradian from Del Frisco's. Take a listen. You know, she's never taken credit for what she's accomplished. And I remember when, you know, she did it in 2003, and it was a very small uh, group of restaurants that participated. And then in 2007, she started it again. And, and just having watched it over the years to become one of the largest fundraisers in the country, uh, but she never took credit for, for all that. Well, the only thing she cared about truly was children and families and making sure that they had food. It was never about how big Houston Restaurant Weeks was. It was never about how large the donation was. It was never about any kind of bragging rights as to what she had accomplished. And I remember being part of meetings with her and we would talk about um, Houston Restaurant Weeks. And at every meeting, when she started talking about the children uh, that needed food and the families, she would always tear up and choke up and get everybody else in the same you know, mindset, but it really meant the world to her. Yeah, and uh, I was lucky enough to have a lot of great times with Arthur and with Cleverly together, and they were dear, dear friends. Another dear friend of hers is uh, multiple Emmy winner Ernie Manus, uh, who has been, you know, here's that word again, he's been a legend, legendary figure on a uh, broadcasting figure in Houston for many, many, many years. Uh, and uh, when I was talking to him right before we did the interview that you're about to see, I said, Ernie, you know, is thinking about it. I think Cleverly introduced me to you. And she, he goes, yeah, Cleverly introduces everybody to everybody because she knows everyone. And she, she, she pretty much did. So take a listen to Ernie Manus's memories of Cleverly Stone. I remember, I always remember knowing her. I don't ever remember not knowing her since I moved here. And for 24 years, Cleverly was always a constant. And the whole concept, the idea that someone as full of life as Cleverly isn't with us just doesn't seem real. But so much of what she did will continue on. And we were talking earlier, friends and I, about the whole idea of the uh, Houston Restaurant Weeks. You know, without Cleverly, that wouldn't be anything. So we all may miss her and grieve in the loss of her, but the number of lives, the people that won't eat because she's not here to help them, her reach goes so far beyond what any of us think. And millions of dollars in food she, it was her her idea to do this here, and it's just it's it's really hard to comprehend who will fill the void of Cleverly Stone. Yeah, and uh, Ernie Ernie said so many other wonderful things uh, about Cleverly, like everyone we've inter interviewed had, and we just don't have enough time to share that with you. But before we uh, before we go to the break here, and please stay with us because we have so much more uh, in store for you to remember Cleverly Stone. Uh, this next man, this next chef, when he heard that Cleverly was sick and was was home, and and you know it, it didn't look good, he was one of the first guy to say, "What can I do? How can I help? What just tell me?" Uh, and I remember going to Potente Restaurant and executive chef Danny Trace loaded my car with food and I took it over to her house and filled her refrigerator so she'd have everything she needs. Take a listen to Danny Trace. She was just always very so inviting and um, just un unselfish in so many ways because no matter what she did in this industry, it was always about everyone else. Always about everyone else. Um, hence the Houston Restaurant Weeks and all of the stuff that she did for the, the Houston Food Bank. I mean, it, it's just incredible how everything that she did was about everyone else, not about her. Well, Cleverly 
Stone was a friend to all, even legendary Houston Oilers quarterback Dan Pastorini. He joins me live now. Dan, thanks so much for being here. Good morning to you. Good morning, Sally. Uh, thanks for having me. And sorry under the circumstances, of course. Yeah. Well, tell us how you and Cleverly started this friendship. How did you all come to know each other and, and kick off years of friendship? Well, we had the, the opportunity to meet when I was playing um, here in Houston. And to her surprise, um, I informed her that I was in the restaurant business for 37 years. I grew up in the restaurant business because my parents had one. And that immediately was like a magnet for her and I to hook up. And she, you know, she was one of those people that you could never say no to. So whenever she called me, I said, yes, what's the question? And, uh, you know, I, I had the opportunity to work on some of the rodeo cook-offs, taste test, and met a lot of her colleagues in the media and her friends uh, around town. And uh, she was just a, a wonderful person. And then when I started my rub business, uh, she helped me uh, get that kicked off and get some publicity on it by inviting me to be on her show several times. And uh, she was kind of surprised that I was able to cook a little uh, other than just throw a football. But, um, she just had that infectious smile and that uh, attitude of never say die. She did so much for the city uh, in helping people, making sure that people had meals. And uh, it was just uh, an honor to, to know her. She was just a very classy lady. Mm -hmm. And she was such a huge fan of barbecue. I mean, she loved all types yep. of food, but I know from talking with her over the years, she really loved barbecue. What, what do you hope her legacy will be here in the city of Houston? Well, I remember her. She's kind of like the Maxine Messenger. I'm dating myself. Maxine Messenger years ago of the uh, food industry. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I will remember her always seeing her at the cook-offs and wearing her hats and wearing her, her scarves and walking around interviewing the crowd and interviewing the competitors and uh, just bringing a smile to everybody's face. So, and also the work that she's done in the city to help uh, feed families. Yeah, Dan Pastorini, we appreciate your time so much today. Thank you for sharing Thanks, some Grammy. of your memories and we hope to see you back here again on The Morning Show. Thanks for having me. Sure. And up next, a look at Cleverly's legacy in radio. But first, the high tech Texan Michael Garfield shares another fond memory of Cleverly. Cleverly leaves behind so much for the restaurant and food community, but the Houston community itself, what she has done with Restaurant Weeks, from taking it to an idea from one week to two weeks, in the entire month of August, the millions of dollars that she has raised for the food bank, that will be her, her lasting legacy, something that I will remember, something all of us will remember. Um, it was a, a tough get go at the beginning, but uh, she wrangled those restaurants to make sure they participated and uh, we will all remember her for that. Most of you will remember Michelle Merhar, former anchor and traffic authority for Fox 26 Morning News. Well, she joins me now live to share some of the memories she has about Cleverly Stone. Good morning, Michelle, and it's good to see you. You know, in the morning, <laughs> Cleverly just brought life into the studio. She really did. Good to be here. Thanks for having me, Jose. I wish it was happier circumstances, but I tell you what, I take such happy memories away. When I think of Cleverly, I just think of her amazing bright smile every time she came into the studio you never knew what was coming with her from what kind of food was going to be prepared to what amazing chef or restaurant she was going to feature she had this incredible way of combining different cultures from indian food to japanese food to mexican food to all american to coffee shops and it was always refreshing when she came in because you knew it was going to be something fun that wasn't controversial or something that, uh, you know, maybe the only controversial thing was how the steak was being cooked or, or how something was being prepared. But I tell you what, Jose, if you ever saw her put together her segment, she was a one man band. She was very detail oriented every single time. She was always consistent. You could always count on her. Um, and the way that she handled her guests, she knew exactly how to make 
everything look amazing. And if you've ever tried to, I don't, I don't know who's ever tried this, but if you ever tried to situate dishes in your kitchen and make them look appetizing, much less try food on the air live, I mean, that's a real natural ability. And she just, she never complained. You never knew that maybe she wasn't doing well. Um, she just, she was always so glamorous to me. Um, and, you know, and I got to work with her a long time and, and we don't, we don't carry the title part of the Fox family lightly. And I know that a lot of people really trusted her recommendations and tuned in just for her to see what she had to say about different places. It was a big deal for a lot of people to go out during Houston restaurant weeks and enjoy restaurants that maybe they wouldn't normally get to go to. Um, and what she created there is just a machine to just be honored, really. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And, and around holidays, whether it was St. Patrick's Day, whether it was Valentine's Day, whether it was Thanksgiving, she, <laughs> and this used to crack me up, she would come in in costumes, you know, with the chefs. She got the chefs to wear costumes, too. Yes, she did. I know. We mentioned earlier, I, I loved what Ruben had to say about getting people to come in early in the morning. I mean, you have to think the restaurant business is humming at night, and you know they're up late getting the restaurant cleaned up. And then she had people turn it around, come in, do live segments. It was incredible. And you're right. Uh, I remember, remember Harold would come in, and it wasn't just a funny hat or like a Santa hat. She was head to toe. There, there was no, you know, it, it was it was go hard or go home with cleverly you either gave it to your all or that or nothing um and and you showed up for her no matter what you know when cleverly was calling you wanted to be a part of it no matter what i'll never forget once she, years ago she asked me to help judge a guacamole contest at cafe di fiore in the woodlands i hated at the time guacamole okay i didn't say anything but i thought if I if it's an opportunity to work with Cleverly and do something fun outside of the studio, you best believe I'm going to be there with bells on. And uh, anyway, it was fun. Every time she was around, it was fun. And your belly was getting full, you know. And, and, and if you weren't a foodie, she made you want to be a foodie, you know. She made you want to get to know uh, something different or, or try something you wouldn't normally try. Um, you know, she really, she was a really, really neat person. She's going to really be missed by a lot of people. You know, the, uh, the mark that she made, not only on us at the station, but on the community, will yeah. last forever. You know, right. and, and the things that she did, everyone who has something to say about her has a smile on their face when they're saying yeah. it, because she was just that type of person. She brought That's that right. smile out of you. Michelle, thank you so very much. Thanks. Good to see you, too. You, too. Welcome back, everybody. You know... Everyone who worked with Cleverly has something nice to say about her because she has never said anything contrary to anyone. She would not even call herself a food critic because she just wanted to talk about food. You know, and uh, it was really nice to have her come into the studio. Uh, we would always take pictures with her. Here is with uh, Sibila Vargas, who no longer works here in the Houston area. But this was one of her early appearances on Fox 26. You know, and even when we had celebrities in the studio, she would always want to meet them, talk to them, and invite them someplace just to talk more so she would know them. Cleverly also got me involved in a couple of uh, cooking contests. Uh, this one was uh, really a, a high class affair. Then there was al always the foodies at the uh, Houston Livestock Show and rodeo. And I remember one thing she got me involved with, with a, a friend of mine who she knew before I knew her, and that was uh, the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the chili cook-off, the kosher chili cook-off. And this, I think, is one of her first appearances on Fox 26, Robert Del Grande, who had at the time one of his signature dishes, and I think it was a coffee ground encrusted steak. Now, Cleverly knew about it. I didn't know anything about it. But uh, she was able to, to explain everything and get Robert Del Grande. And uh, it was just one of those things that uh, you try and say, oh, wow, coffee encrusted steak. But she knew all about it, and she would present it to folks. Now, you know, cleverly inspired a local radio personality, or a former local radio personality, Dana Steele, uh, to shave her head to raise money for the Houston Food Bank. Dana joins us right now. 
Dana, she was a magnificent person. And working in radio, it's hard to have a food show. You know about radio, but she was able to pull it off, wasn't she? Oh, gosh, not only did she pull it off, she pulled it off spectacularly. I met her uh, actually through Mark Stevens, the late Mark Stevens of Stevens and Pruitt, when she, uh, when Mark left KLOL and Mark and Cleverly decided to do this sort of whole lifestyle kind of thing. And it just grew into a, an incredible friendship. And it's, it was just, a, I've got my Kleenex ready. It was just a few weeks ago that I, um, I called cleverly and said, okay, I have this crazy idea. I want to shave my head and raise money for the Houston Food Bank. And man, she jumped right on it, got me in contact with everybody. We raised, um, gosh, well, I think we're over $10,000 now. You see it's starting to come back in a little bit. Um, she was just amazing. And uh, about a year ago, I reached out to her, or actually she reached out to me and said, um, you know, it's getting worse. Can you come sit in with me in case I get sick or, you know, I, I, I have a chemo crash or whatever. Can you come sit in? And so I went in a couple of times and filled in on her radio show, Jose, and I thought the same thing. How do you, I mean, a food show, you're usually on television and you're showing the cooking and you're showing the food. And uh, it was just, it, she just, she, she could do theater of the mind. And, and also I've just had so much fun watching all of these these interviews with everybody, everybody talking about how much she made us eat. <laughs> <laughs> she definitely affected all of our lives in this community. And people who don't even think that she touched them, she actually did. They just don't know it just yet. They'll find out. Dana, thank you so very much for joining us. You know, and there's the, uh, the website for the Houston Food Bank, which uh, Dana supports and which... Um, Cleverly has always had very, very close to her heart. Oh, wow. Just a, a it's a good time to talk about her, <laughs> but it's a bad time because we have actually lost her right now. So thanks a lot, Dana. Thank you. Now, Ruben, you have been able to talk to a lot of individuals regarding Cleverly. Share some more memories with us. Yeah, absolutely, Jose. So uh, one of, let's say one of Cleverly's newer close friends was uh, producer Jake Reiner. Uh, he was the young man on the other side of the glass when the Cleverly show was going on, and he, he had to help wrangle what could be a three-ring circus of live food uh, radio. And like Dana said, Cleverly could just make it come alive. I used to listen to her driving around many, many times. But take a listen to producer Jake, as he was affectionately called, as he remembers Cleverly. I think the greatest thing that actually really happened with the Cleverly uh, Food Talk Show on 650 was when she brought in Facebook Live. When she brought in Facebook Live, it really helped the people that wanted to hear but weren't around the radio, so they were still able to see the food and the presentation and who she was talking to. So the advancement of technology really helped the radio show and her, and her get that all out there. Her Facebook, Houston Foodie page, I, I read today, and there are some great tributes to her. Um, she has touched a lot of people in this city, a lot more than people will ever know. If you look back at her history with Houston Restaurant Weeks, she's, uh, over the past 10 years, $18 million. Well, if you look, $7 feeds 15 people. She has fed a lot of people in this city. Um, and it's all because of her heart. She knew what was going on. So it, she, she really was a pioneer in this city. Yeah, pioneer indeed. Well, uh, indeed, well said, Jake. All right, so we are we have a lot more coming up, and we want you to stay with us for uh, our tribute and as we remember uh, the great Cleverly Stone. And right now, I want to leave you with a man who uh, had a role in playing in getting Cleverly uh, on the radio, Mr. Randy Lemon. Check it out. Uh, I just love listening to him when she interviewed uh, chefs on her show, like Chris Shepard. It's just like all the names of his restaurants. They went through that for about an hour, and it was one of the most fascinating hours of radio for me. Somebody like me who's a foodie and loves uh, the, the radio show that she did, and of course, absolutely love being on television with her a couple of times in my life, doing my own recipes. So, uh, you know, she will be sorely missed in the restaurant industry by a lot of people.
Welcome back, everybody, to our tribute of Cleverly Stone, who passed away um, yesterday. And, uh, or gosh, the days run together, but it's my turn <laughs> to have a little bit of a look back at my experiences with Cleverly. And, you know, I could just echo what everybody else has said. She was a gregarious, fun loving uh, woman who dedicated her life to raising money for the Houston food banks. And, you know, when you look at, um, the entire city of Houston, who else does what she does? Who else does what she did? Nobody. There are food critics. She wasn't a food critic. She was an enthusiast. She was a champion for restaurants, both the big fancy restaurants and the little hole in the wall restaurants. And she, through Houston Restaurant Weeks, gave a lot of people a chance to go to very expensive fancy restaurants where they probably would have never gone before because she got the restaurant owners to reduce their prices and maybe go to a place where ordinarily the dinner would be $200 and you can go there and sample some of the same food for $50 and know that part of your money was going to go to support food for people who, who really needed it. One thing I did want to point out, though, is that she was a human being. And one thing that I always liked about Cleverly is that she she wasn't always that singing, you know, kind of growling, happy-go-lucky person that you saw in every cooking segment. She had frustrations like everybody else. She was human like everybody else. And, um, you know, she was really let down by some restaurant owners, a very small percentage, through the years who would leave her high and dry and not pay what they said they were going to to support Houston Restaurant Weeks. And that hurt her. And she would get very emotional in talking about that. And, um, you know, I wanted to point that out just to say that, you know, she was she was human and she dedicated her life to raising money for the Houston Food Bank. And uh, it, it was emotional for her, you know, both the highs and the lows. And so I hope that there's a way that the Houston uh, Food Bank can pay tribute to her in some way. Give her a building, give her a statue. She deserves it. Uh, we're going to be right back. Uh, but before we go, we're going to leave you with some statements from award-winning chef Chris Shepard. I'm saddened to hear about the loss of Cleverly Stone. She had such an impact on the Houston restaurant scene for so many. Um, not to mention just what she has done for the Houston Food Bank. The loss will be, will be large. Welcome back, everyone. As we continue to remember the life and legacy of Cleverly Stone, I just wanted to share a couple of my memories, the way that I'll be remembering her. Uh, Cleverly and I started working at the station at about the same time. I was a couple years before her, but when I made the transition from working on the late news to the morning news, she was one of the first people to make me feel welcomed and like I was part of the morning show. She was truly one of the most supportive and generous people I have ever ever met and I would do segments with chefs from time to time that she would help me set up on her own time. She was so generous of her time and I knew she'd be watching and I would always be so nervous to do a food segment that cleverly had helped me set up but immediately after she would always text me and tell me good job even though you know I knew it didn't come it paled in comparison to a cleverly cooking segment so um, you know, I, I'll just remember her as such a, a, a loyal friend and, and to honor her legacy, I think I just want to try to be more, more selfless, more giving of my time um, because that's the way we can, we can honor her. So right now we want to bring in the man who brought Cleverly's food segments to Fox 26 back in 2008, the vice president and general manager of our station, D'Artagnan Bebel. Dart, thanks so much for coming on with us live this morning. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Sally. So, you know, she was such a natural talent and she had such a big personality and even bigger heart. What made you say, you know, years ago that I'm going to put her on TV in order to help restaurants and help the food bank? Well, first of all, she was such a genuine, authentic person. And, you know, so often in, in our business, which is the news and, and, and a little bit of show business as well, there are people that are, that are not very authentic. But she had a, a heart of gold. Um, and truly wanted to help others. And that's, that's something that's very rare, particularly in our business. 
And Dart, there's so many fun pictures of you two judging public events together. But I know you also had, uh, you know, an, an out of the public eye uh, friendship with her as well. What will you miss most uh, about Clev? Oh, there's so many things, uh, uh, you know, two in particular. But, you know, one is, is that one of the things that, that she and I tried to do um, was to have lunch somewhere uh, about once a month um, for a very long time. And uh, typically, you know, there may have been new restaurants or up and comers, you know, that sort of thing. And, you know, very often we, we'd meet there. And so, you know, there are many, many occasions where I'd, I'd get to the restaurant early and, and it's a lunch hour. And, you know, in many cases, because they were new, they weren't necessarily full or, you know, people at that time. And so typically I would come and, you know, me being, you know, not recognizable or, or I actually call myself a nobody, uh, typically they'd give me a table somewhere in the back, you know, what you would might describe as, you know, a B or a C table. And then uh, all of a sudden, cleverly would arrive minutes later saying, oh, I'm here to meet somebody. And she points and say, oh, th there he is. And all of a sudden, I was, I had all of this attention where the maitre d', the executive chef or hostess or whatever, oh, sir, excuse me, you know, we have a much better table for you. And so, you know, on those food adventures <laughs> that Cliff and I used to go on, I felt like a celebrity with, with her. So the, the other oh, fond well, memory she was, was um, such a room. treasure to our Fox 26 family and to the, the city of Houston. And thank you for sharing some of those fond memories, Dart. Appreciate it. Have a good weekend. Thank you. You too. All right, and up next, we continue to honor the life and legacy of Cleverly Stone, taking a look back at some of her most famous moments at the rodeo. But first, a message here from famed chef Michael Cordua. I mean, there's not one donor that I can mention to you that has had the economic impact that we then translate into millions of meals. Uh, I'm talking about over 50 million people have eaten because of her tenacity and her professionalism and however else, and her love, I mean, selfless love. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, every year, every year at the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo, the man that makes the food at the Midway exciting and fun is Dominic Palmieri, and he is also a dear friend of Cleverly Stone. Listen to how he remembers her. The one thing I have to tell you about Cleverly that's really funny is she cannot find her way out of a paper bag. If she gets on the fairgrounds, we know, she gets to the rodeo, we know that we have to send five golf carts, two search parties just to find her to get her in because she's gonna be at one of the gates. But that was what was beautiful about working with Cleverly. One of the things that I really admired a lot was she really gave me a sense of of my duty as coming to Houston every year, that Houston had such an amazing, uh, amazing culinary scene that she's like, you know, you really need to do your best to step this up every year. And ironically, it was 10 years ago that cleverly gave me the name Midway Gourmet. We were getting ready to do our first hit together and she says, Dominic, I see all this great food. This is delicious. It's amazing. And, but what do I call you? I said, well, I'm, I'm Dominic, I'm the food, she goes, Dominic, the food guy, that, does, that doesn't sound right, but you're the Midway guy and all this stuff is so gourmet. And she said, that's it. You are now the Midway Gourmet. She said, before we go on air, you better get somebody to register that name. And of course it was two hours behind in Phoenix time. And I woke my wife up at like 3.30 in the morning and said, hurry up, get online and try and reserve the name Midway Gourmet. And it stuck there ever since. All right, and coming up, we're gonna take a deep dive into the vault, the earliest memory we have of Cleverly Stone and here with our Fox 26 family. But first, another one of her good friends remembers Cleverly, Mr. Dave Morales. Hi, it's Dave Morales with BackstageOL.com. And I'm John Stimbo with BackstageOL.com. From day one, Cleverly Stone was always one of our biggest fans. She would see us in the hallways there at Fox 26. As we were getting ready for our celebrity interview, she would always refer to us as the backstage boys. And some of our most fond memories with Cleverly are the times that we got to spend with her at Rodeo Houston. That's right, judging fried foods year after year at the Gold Buckle Foodie Awards. And she changed thousands of lives with the work that she did with Houston Restaurant Weeks. So Cleverly will always be our queen of culinary. Cleverly Stone, we miss you. 
we'll put uh, a little bit of this rich avocado over the top. Uh-huh. Which is sort of like, you know, the butter of the you know, trees. You know, Chef, I never would have thought of avocado and filet mignon before. Neither would I have. Yeah. But the creaminess, well, they're both That's creamy. why I am who I am, because that's I right. think of these things, you know? <laughs> That's why you are Robert yeah. Del Grande, You're, the father okay. of Southwestern cuisine, by the way. Uh, yes, yeah. that's very true. Yes. Uh, mm, it does yeah. smell good. There and and steam, and, steam. Yes, yes and we're, we're going to have to have you back to... Uh, Show us some more of your fabulous recipes. And Cleverly, I know we'll be seeing you next week. Next Friday, we're going to talk about some restaurant news and all good stuff. There's new restaurants and new chefs in town and all kinds of fun stuff. So, yeah, tune in. Look forward to it. All Thank right. you so very much. That was Cleverly's first appearance on our morning show back in 2008 with Jose and Chef Robert Del Grande. You know, cancer is never fair and we are so sad that it took such a generous person from us. Our hearts are with Cleverly's family, including her daughter Katie, son-in-law Joe, and grandson Luca. Thank you, Cleverly, for the lasting legacy you have given the city of Houston and for all of the memories that you have left us here at Fox 26. We hope you have a wonderful weekend, everyone, and we invite you as our viewers to share your memories of Cleverly with us on our after show. We're going to meet you on our Fox 26 Facebook page right now. Good morning, everyone, on this Friday. We've just wrapped up a very emotional hour of television, remembering uh, the legacy and the life of Cleverly Stone, our longtime food contributor who many of our viewers got to know with her big personality. And she always man managed to you know, teach us something, too, during her segments. But she passed away yesterday after battling stage four uterine cancer for about a year. And it just still doesn't seem real that such a bright light and a treasure in our community uh, is gone. And what we learned after talking and hearing from so many people who were remembering her this last hour is that her reach goes far beyond what most people even realize as the founder of Houston Restaurant Weeks and raising millions of dollars for the Houston Food Bank to feed Houston's hungry. So I, I want to bring in uh, Jose first, because Jose talked with the Food Bank President, Brian Green, and others who, who really talked about um, her legacy and who's going to step up to fill the void. Jose? Right now, no one knows, but the community is going to have to get together to make sure that uh, what she has started continues in this community because it has been it's it's been a boom for the restaurants it's been a boom for the employees of the restaurants and it's also been a boom for those who decided to be a part of houston restaurant weeks um, i can't remember who it was maybe dan pastorini or, or or one of the other uh, folks who was familiar with her who said that this allowed people who would not normally be able to go to a high-class restaurant and, and buy a, a plate for 200 bucks. During Houston Restaurant Weeks, there was a menu that didn't cost you a heck of a lot. And a portion, whether it was three bucks for a lunch or seven bucks for a dinner or, or, or something in that general uh, area of, of money, you got a chance to be someplace that you would not normally be. So she, she really provided opportunities for not just the restaurants and the, the employees who were able to get all of the tips and everything, but uh, for the community itself, giving the community an opportunity to, to try something different, whether it was Indian food, whether it was um, uh, Turkish food, whether it was food from the, 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 the East Coast or food from the West Coast, uh, even simple things like pizza. Uh, she was able to bring those things and teach everyone about them. And uh, also she had some energy that just came through the camera lens and you felt it. And that's what made you want to go out to eat. She was one of the best foodie supporters in this community. And uh, whether we're going to have someone to take her place for Houston Restaurant Weeks, no one knows. But I think it's going to be up to us to make sure that it, it does continue because it helps so, so many people. It, who do you know who has raised close to $17 million for one organization? I don't know of anyone who has done that other than Cleverly. And you really would not know it unless you asked because 
she just didn't talk about that. She just wanted to try and help families and children uh, fill that empty void in their stomach and feed them. Hmm. Yeah, she was remarkable and irreplaceable. And it was, it was Mike who was talking about that um, when he was remembering her. Uh, and, and Mike, I'm the same way. I don't go to any fancy restaurants usually unless it's Houston Restaurant Weeks. Um, and because Cle Cleverly made them, you know, easy for the average person to, to go and, and get a fancy meal. Um, but you were also talking about just the humid side of, of Cleverly and, um, and how she was a very private person during her, her, her cancer battle. Yeah, she was very private, you know, which, um, look, everybody has their own personality and, um, you know, when, when things like this happen, you know, when she found out that she was uh, diagnosed with uterine cancer, it was already progressed very, very far. And I think that she sort of, you know, among the shock, obviously, of learning that you have cancer, there's all kind of emotions that go along with that, like guilt, you know, I should have gone to the doctor sooner. There's a little bit of even embarrassment, like, gosh, uh, you know, why didn't I now I have to explain to people why I didn't go to the doctor, things like that. And I know that she felt a lot of that because I, I, I reached out to her because I really wanted to talk to her about it. And she, you know, she wanted to stay very private about it. And um, and I respected that, you know, and I think that, you know, we all did. Um, you know, that being said, when you find out that she finally succumbed to it, it, it was, you know, really upsetting. And, uh, you know, it was just, uh, I, I guess, an honor, you know, to have spent so many fun moments with her, you know, on the morning news and, and to get to know her. And But she was, you know, a, a, a bit more of a, a complex person. You know, a lot of times you see somebody on the air, you see one aspect of them with her singing or, you know, doing her growl or, you know, just being silly or being enthusiastic, you know, about food. But she was a human being, you know, she was a mom. And she, uh, you know, had all of the different struggles that all of us have in life. And especially given the fact that she spent a big portion of her time where she was working, but really she was volunteering. You know, she wasn't getting paid for a lot of what she was doing at all. No, she did it all for free. I mean, hours upon hours of work went into putting on Houston Restaurant Weeks every single year. I want to bring in Ruben Dominguez now, longtime friend of Cleverly. Um, Cle I mean, Ruben, she had such an amazing sense of humor, but she also took her job very seriously. You know, it's something she never bragged about, but she also really took it seriously that she was helping to end hunger here in Houston. Absolutely. Just the consummate professional. I learned so much uh, from her uh, just in the way, uh, uh, you know, she conducted herself on the air and her show prep. She would always take she wouldn't go to any events. And she she was invited to everything. And many times she'd invite me to come along. But, you know, it was always during the week. So getting up for the morning show, I, I could rarely attend. Uh, and I remember um, I would always call her on Friday nights and just to check in and to find out who was on the show because I always listened to the show when I was running chores on Saturday morning. Uh, I always had her dialed in on, on, the, on, my, on the stereo in my car. And uh, uh, I'd say, Clev, you know, what are you doing? She's like, oh, you know, so much to do. I'm lining up these guests. You know, they're not calling me back. I'm da 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 But it was like prep, prep, prep. And if she didn't know a chef, she wanted to have the background ready. Where, where did he cook before? Where did he go to school? You know, what, what, what restaurants, uh, you know, uh, what is, you know, techniques and just all of this stuff because she knew everything, you know. And it wasn't just because that was naturally. It's because she put that time in. Um, you know, she was just so amazing. I'll, I'll tell you a funny story quickly. She invited me to go to the James Beard dinner. So, you know, getting a James Beard award uh, like Robert Del Grande has is like getting a Michelin star in Europe. Uh, it's a big deal. So we, it was at Brennan's and we went to the dinner. Uh, three Brennan's chefs, including uh, Tori McPhail from Commanders, Danny Trace from Potente, now from Potente, uh, and I forgot the third chef from Cafe Adelaide. Well, and we sat next to Alex Brennan Martin. I mean, we were at the VIP table. Dart talked about that. You know, you go somewhere with Cleverly, you get the VIP table. And um, it was three courses, three wine pairings. No one told me 
you don't eat every course and drink everything they pour in your glass. And it was like a Wednesday night. I got home and I told my wife, I may have to go to the hospital. It's one of my, and you know, cleverly didn't stop me. She was, she just kind of let me go and do my thing, but I had so many good times with her. I miss her so much. Aww. Ruben, thank you for those memories there. We all do. And I know you helped so much in the last uh, year of her life here with bringing her food and filling in on her radio show and um, w sending you a big hug right now, Ruben. You did amazing on your tributes to Cleverly during our nine o'clock hour. We really appreciate that. Um, Nate is also joining us, I understand. Um, Nate, I don't know how much of the coverage you got to see at nine, but um, I know that, that, that you loved Cleverly as well. There's no question about that, Sally. Probably good I wasn't on the show because I would have taken up at least 10 minutes and you were anchoring. You would have had to tell me, get off. You know, but I will tell you that not only did I uh, join Cleverly on television, also joined her at the restaurants and on radio. She did her radio talk show on CBS 650 and Patrick Creighton and I, you know, we worked at Sports Radio 610 at the time. She would always bring us food on Saturdays when we host our show, on Sundays when we host our show. She gave so much to us and to the radio station for which she worked and all the people. And if you had had a lot of those people over at 650, you had one of the producers on, from 650. If you'd had those people, you never would have gotten that show done. I can tell you that right now. She helped so many people. And you talked about restaurant week. We were always there. You know why? Because we knew we were going to eat well. There was no doubt in my mind or <laughs> Pat's mind we were going to eat well. We were always part of the competitions. We always had fun. See, I'm going too long right now. I'm just telling you. It was a great experience with her. I posted pictures on Facebook, just some of them. But she was awesome, and she will be missed. She helped so many people. I was one of them. Pat was one of them. Patrick Creighton was one of them. And certainly, she was great for the Houston community. As was mentioned, double-digit millions. Who else does that? Jose talked about it. Who else does that? <laughs> 17 million, which translates into more than 44 million meals for people who are hungry here in Houston. So just an incredible pioneer in our city. And I hope there's a day named after her. I hope, like others have said, there's a statue or some kind of wall in the food bank with her name on it because she certainly deserves it. And may we all be more giving and more generous of our time and show more support for others. Be more selfless. That's the legacy uh, that we can carry on as we go into the weekend as we remember cleverly thank you all so much for joining us here and we hope you do have a beautiful weekend uh, with your loved ones take care we'll see you back here monday